In this video, let's talk a little bit about the Euro FX. The Euro FX is a market that we are getting ready to expire out of. This is the December contract and ready to move out into the March contract. So you can see we're going to expire this contract, move out into the March contract. You can see that when we do that, this is the daily chart, of course, adds in here an extra oh, two and a half, three months before we have to expire this contract out and move along. Now, what's the advantages and what's the disadvantages of having a contract that expires? Why do we do that? You know, over in the Forex market, they don't do that. In the stock market, they don't do that. These markets will just run forever on one chart, right? But in the futures market, we have these markets that expire. Why do we have to expire one, move out, move roll over into the next contract month and start trading something new. Well, the advantage of that is that we can go into a spread. We can actually buy the December contract and we can sell the March contract. And you're like, well, why would I want to do that? If I'm going to buy the, the, the December contract, aren't I going to be making as much money in the December contract as I'm losing in the March contract if I go into a spread? Well, not exactly. Spreads uh, have some advantages to them. Plus, we can do some fancy things. This is how we can also hedge our crops. We can own a particular uh, crop, say a corn crop, and then we can hedge against it by buying and selling different contract months. And so there's some advantages and some disadvantages. And if you'd like to learn a little bit more about what some of those advantages and disadvantages are, come over to our website, tradementors.com. Contact me, LH Turner, at tradementors.com. I'd be happy to send you some video education on understanding and learning a little bit more about hedging and trading uh, spreads and how we can take advantage of some of these advantages and disadvantages, of course. So there are some disadvantages of having charts that expire. You do have to roll over into the next contract. But it's not a big disadvantage when you consider what the advantages are. So contact me, and I'd be happy to show you the advantages. But now let's drop into and talk a little bit more about the Euro FX and what it did today. So this is the daily chart over here on the March contract. And as you can see, it's been pretty active the last couple of days on here. And so this is one of the keys that I want to point out. Uh, it's hard to know when to day trade. Oftentimes people think they want to day trade every single day, but that's not always possible because sometimes the market goes through non-trending periods, and that's a very bad, rotten time to be trading on a very short-term basis. We need the volatility. We need the market to move. We need it to trend. And when a market's going through an awful time frame like this right through here, this is not a very good time frame to be taking a lot of trades on a very short time frame. So we want to be looking for markets that are very active, very moving. This is a good time frame. This was a very great time to be trading. The, the Euro FX. Uh, we had a few slow days in here the, the last week that were not very good, but it started to pick up again today and yesterday, and so we want to start looking at this market again. Again, it's the volatility that gives us the ability to trade and make trades on these shorter term time frames. So let's drop down to the range bar 6, take a look at this market this morning. You can see right about here is about uh, 8.30 this morning out, out in this uh, left side of the chart. That's about when markets open. We kind of want to get up, open our eyes, crack open our software uh, and start looking at the charts. And this is where we want to start looking for trends uh, in the morning of the New York time session. Now, what we're seeing here is very easily, very simply, a beautiful little Elliott wave pattern. Now, we can see in here, I want you to remember that when we draw these trend lines in here along these lines, you can see we're using the bulls and bears blue light system as our breaking points. And these are basically, if you want to think about them, they're mathematically calculated trend lines. And so that's what these are. They're mathematically calculated trend lines. And you want to just kind of draw your your hard trend line, your, your trend line along with those. You want them to match up when the market crosses. This is a, a very important point here, that when you draw your trend line, you want those blue lights to cross at the same point. If you don't have the blue lights turned on, it's very difficult to know if you're drawing your trend lines at the right location. That's why these mathematically calculated trend lines are so important. We can draw those in there and we can have an additional extra confirmation or confidence level in our position. Now, you can see that this is a nice little uh, arrow up in here giving us an indication first thing in the morning that this market is starting to turn bearish. We might have been bullish on this market in here. We did have a trend line break right here for a short position. But if we miss this one, because oftentimes we'll miss this first trade, we're still anticipating an uptrend due to the bullish arrow, and we're anticipating the next leg of the move, right? We might thinking be thinking this is just going to be a counter trend, and then we're looking for the next leg up. So we might not get into this first leg, and you'll hear me say that all the time. We oftentimes miss the first leg of the Elliott wave, and that's because we're anticipating an uptrend when this is a reversal, and the market's actually turning and starting to come down. So what we have is we have a re-entry location, and that's those three dots right there. And I call that the entry 
or the re-entry. If you did get in on the arrow and you started taking a short position off of this place and you wanted to re get and, and you exited on the blue light, let's say you exited on the blue light, uh, come in here and you use the blue light as a trailing exit stop and you got out, this would be your re-entry location right here for the next leg of the Elliott Wave or the A, B, C, D pattern. So this would be your next re-entry. But if you did, didn't get in at the top with this arrow and you were not short the position on this market, this would be your entry location. This would be your first entry. So this is why I call it your entry or your re-entry, depending on whether you got in on the first leg. If we come in here with our Fibonacci ABC tool, you'll see we just take this off of here. We draw that down to the ABC point, and we want to break this right at the same place as the blue lights. Once again, those blue lights come in and tell us where we're supposed to be putting our tools. So this blue light is breaking, therefore that's the break where we want to do our ABC pattern. We then project the next leg down where we anticipate it going. Of course, that 130.9 is the golden ratio number, and we love to see the markets come down to those 130.9 points. Those are our target points. Of course, 100 is another very important target point, but that 130.9 is kind of the golden ratio number, and we love to see it come to that location, and it has a tendency to come down to that location and then bounce off of it quite often. You'll notice that. Now, as we come in here, we're coming into the third wave of the Elliott Way. Let's delete some of these drawing tools, and you see that we're getting another entry or another re entry location right here. Again, this is the blue lights coming in here with a crossover. You can draw your trend line across that exact same location that you're seeing that blue light come in there. Mathematically calculated trend line corresponds with your drawing of your normal trend line. This is uh, your third uh, wave of the down wave on the Elliott wave. This is your second opportunity for re-entry and this is going for that third wave. Now this is a less likely that this market's going to be a, a huge wave. It's more likely this is our this is our biggest meat and potatoes in here taking the center out of this trade. Uh, this is where we generally have uh, the biggest move but we do like to go for that second wave. Just make sure you protect yourself very well here uh, and if the market does not decisively move in your favor just jump right back out because oftentimes these last legs are not very long. And so we come in here and if we just draw a real quick dollar calculator from the entry to the exit, you can see that's about a $112 move in there. Now, that's not uh, including commissions and fees, but that's the last leg of our third wave of our Elliott Wave. Now, if we come in here and draw our Elliott Wave in here, very simply, we come in here, drag that to the one, two, you can see that come in here, three, four, and again, we draw these breaks right where the blue light tells us. And then this is five, and now we're coming in here looking for the ABC pattern. So this is our X, one, two, three, four, five, three drive to the bottom, Elliott wave pattern, coming in here with the entry, the re-entry, the breaks. This is a perfect right out of the textbook manual, uh, Elliott wave on EuroFX this morning in the March contract. And if you have any questions, don't hesitate to contact me, lhturner at tradementors.com.